Right, let's try proving this result by induction. So we're going to wipe this stuff off that wasn't by induction. And we're going to say, supposing, we're going to start by supposing n equals 1 and showing it's true for n equals 1. So first we do n equals 1. Well, it's clearly true then, because obviously 1, the left this adding up all the numbers up to n, if n equals 1, is not very difficult, right? It's just 1. So it's clearly true since, well, here we get 1. 1 up to n is just 1. And n times n plus 1 over 2 is 1 times 1 plus 1 is 2, and then we have to divide it by 2, which is 1. So that's definitely true for n equals 1. So now we have to suppose it's true for n equals k. Suppose that 1 plus k really equals k times k plus 1 over 2. So that's an assumption. We don't try and prove it directly. All we're going to do is try and go up one step. Okay, that can be confusing, but we're not going to prove this. We're just going to go up one step. So now we try and prove, try and prove it, prove the n equals k plus 1 case. So that is that we, we have to try and prove that if we add up all the numbers up to k plus 1, we get whatever you get if you substitute k plus 1 into there. So what do you get if you substitute k plus 1 into that? I'm just going to put it in a kind of thought bubble here. Thought bubble says we're trying to get it to be k plus 1 times, well, if we put k plus 1 in here, we get k plus 2, right? Divided by 2. So that's what we're aiming for. So let's see what we actually get. Well, 1 plus 2 plus, if we add it all up to k plus 1, We get this string of numbers, right? But we've assumed that we already know how to do 1 up to k. So that's this part of it. Okay, maybe I'll put brackets around that to make it clearer. So we already know what this part is by assumption. Because by assumption, this part is k times k plus 1 over 2. So this equals k times k plus 1 over 2. And now what's the leftover part? It's k plus 1. So that's by our assumption. Okay, the assumption that we had there. So now we've got to try and show that this thing equals that thing. So the thing we should probably do first is uh, put it all over the same common denominator. So I'm worried I haven't put enough space on my blackboard, but let's try it. So if we put it all over the common denominator of 2, we get k times k plus 1 plus 2k plus 1 all over 2. Right, now what should I do? Well, I should probably take out this factor of k plus 1. So I get k plus 1. And what do I have that's left? Well, over here I've got k. And over here I've got 2. And the whole thing is over 2. Oh, look! I've done it! Woo! -hoo! See, this is exactly the thing I was trying to make it into. So we've done it. So by induction... By induction, it's true. It's true for all n in the natural numbers. Woo! So let's just recap what we did. First, we checked it was true for n equals 1. That's to say, I know how to get to the bottom of the staircase. Then, 
I checked it was that if I assumed it was true for n equals k, I could deduce that it was true for n equals k plus 1, which is to say that no matter where someone, if I had been helicoptered in to the kth place, I don't know how I got there, but if somebody just put me there, then I would be able to go up one step of the staircase. I didn't try and get to the K1, I just said if someone put me on the K step, I would be able to get up one. Putting those facts together means that I've definitely got it being true for anything. Why is that? Do you feel like it's been a cheat? Well, let's think of it like this. I have shown that no matter what step I'm, I've landed on, I will be able to go up one. So here's a big long staircase. So, and I know how to get to the first step, so I know how to get to this one. So what about, do I know how to get to that one? Well, no matter what step I'm on, I do know how to get up one. So that means I certainly know how to get up to here. And once I've got there, I certainly know how to get up to here. And once I've got there, I certainly know how to get up to here, which means I know how to get up to here, which means I know how to get up to here. So I'm done. So no matter what step I was trying to get to, I would be able to get there. This is called the principle of induction. The principle of induction says, perhaps I should clean the board and write it out properly. I kind of like my little picture here. Maybe I'll put it up here. The principle of induction says let P of N be some statement about natural numbers be a statement about the natural number n. And I'm going to suppose two things. Suppose, first of all, that the statement p of 1 is true. So suppose that p of 1 is true. So in the example we just did, P of n was the statement that equals that. So we have here, P of n is the statement 1 plus 2 plus all that to n equals n times n plus 1 over 2. That's a statement, and we can ask whether or not it's true. So if it's true at 1 and 2, if P of K implies P of K plus 1 for all K in the natural numbers, that's this step, then P of N is true for all N in the natural numbers. That is the principle of induction. And that's what we can often use to prove statements that involve the natural numbers. So we'll do some more examples of that, I think.